Good afternoon on today's Angry Alien Bulletin. A recently discovered mystery in the Orion Nebula is becoming even more mysterious. Dozens of pairs of objects orbiting one another, what appear to be rogue planets, although astronomers are not even certain about that, are now generating radio signals, powerful radio signals. Well, to be precise, not all of them are generating these signals, just one particular pair, for reasons that we can't even begin to guess at. As a matter of fact, we don't even know why these dozens of pairs of rogue planets would exist anyway, because it breaks all of the known laws of solar system formation. And if they definitely aren't natural, then only one possibility remains. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to another Alien Bulletin here on The Angry Astronaut. The reason I'm releasing another so quickly after my previous bulletin is because the previous one was really just about the tactics that skeptics and the mainstream media have been using to try to silence anybody who's been doing any serious research about UAPs, about the possible existence of artificial objects having entered our atmosphere, crashed on our planet, it, that sort of thing, but really didn't talk about any sort of new discoveries that have been made, which is what most of us want to hear right now, I would think. And so there are a couple of interesting new developments that have taken place in astronomy, and they are very mysterious indeed. And as I've said a number of times before, when we encounter phenomena in our universe that cannot be explained by any sort of natural causes, no natural causes, causes that we can identify at that point, we really should start looking for artificial causes as well. That's a belief that doesn't seem to be held by the majority of the scientific community for reasons that I can't begin to understand, but why not? I mean, if we examine a very strange phenomena that we observe in our universe and there's absolutely no natural explanation that we can come up with, then why not investigate possible artificial causes? And there are a couple of recent developments that may indeed have a techno-signature behind them. One of these I already did a report on. And this is a solar system that has an interesting orbital pattern. That is to say, the relationship between one orbit and the other is so mathematically precise. The ratios are so exact that if you assign notes on the pentatonic scale to these various planets, it actually plays a song. Now, these sorts of ratios are not all that uncommon, not unheard of anyway, with solar systems that have just evolved. It's actually part of solar system evolution. But something that doesn't happen is a solar system that's been around for billions of years still maintaining this sense of mathematical precision, these precise ratios between the orbital patterns of all the planets. Now, all the scientists who reported on this particular phenomena, all of them said, well, this is absolutely natural. I'm sure there must be some sort of natural cause. No one even thought to mention the possibility of an artificial cause or for extraterrestrial civilizations being involved in trying to perhaps send some sort of message some sort of obvious techno-signature with this solar system. Of course, it was ridiculous to even consider that an artificial cause or a civilization might be behind this. And then, mysteriously, a team of researchers started looking for artificial radio signals coming from this solar system. They began examining the solar system in detail. Even though there are no planets in this solar system that are inside the habitable zone, nothing in the Goldilocks zone, nothing that would really make this solar system stand apart in terms of habitability, nothing that would really make it much of a target in general. 
And yet, interestingly enough, researchers have been looking for radio signals coming from this solar system without really explaining why. Obviously, there's something strange about this solar system, something that seems artificial, something that seems to be happening by design, and yet nobody will really admit it. And this is the case with another quite fascinating development that the James Webb Space Telescope picked up in the Orion Nebula. And this is a phenomenon that I don't think will ever have a natural explanation. I really don't see how we will ever be able to come up with any sort of even theoretical cause that could have brought about this phenomena. It is a phenomena that seems very, very artificial. But the question is, if it is the product of an advanced civilization, why would they have done it? Last year, the James Webb Space Telescope picked up a lot of rogue planets in the Orion Nebula, together with many other interesting phenomena. Now, rogue planets are nothing unusual in our galaxy. We think that they may actually be more common than main sequence stars. There were over 500 of them found in the Orion Nebula. But here's where things started getting very strange indeed. Approximately 80 of these planets exist in pairs. Similar in mass to Jupiter, these planets orbit one another at distances ranging anywhere from 25 to 400 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. These binary objects, 42 pairs of them to be precise, actually even have a name now. They're called the Jupiter Mass Binary Objects, or the Jumbos, and they only seem to exist in the Orion Nebula. What you're looking at right now is a previous discovery of a grouping of rogue planets that was discovered by the European Southern Observatory, over 80 of them in total, and none of them exist in binary pairs. This is a unique occurrence that we have not seen duplicated, at least not thus far, throughout the galaxy and indeed the universe. Now, the interesting thing about these jumbos, or the thing that astronomers cannot begin to understand, is how they fit within our models of solar system evolution, especially if we're talking about rogue planets. Rogue planets are supposed to exist when a solar system ejects them during a particular violent period of solar system formation. But how these planets might get ejected in pairs and remain gravitationally bound to one another after these ejections take place is a complete mystery. Now, the researchers' analysis revealed that these objects appear to be gas giants, but once again, not entirely certain about that, that are roughly a million years old with temperatures of around 700 degrees Celsius, so they are quite hot. And they are surrounded by billowing cloaks made out of carbon monoxide, methane, and steam. But that doesn't explain why they would exist in pairs, and if they are the result of natural formation within the Orion Nebula, well, that doesn't make any sense either, because the theoretical lower limit for an object to form on its own from a star-like cloud collapse is roughly three Jupiter masses. Anything smaller should be born tethered to a star. And this makes the existence of not only one of these objects, but pairs, very, very difficult to explain. The only model that fits is a rogue planet. But rogue planets never get ejected from their host solar systems in pairs. Yet there they are, and quite a number of them. But the mystery has gotten a lot stranger recently. The researchers decided to study these pairs of rogue planets, if that is indeed what they are, and try to find radio wave emissions, because some planets emit quite a lot of radio waves. Jupiter, for example, spews several different types of radio signals, including gigahertz frequency emissions thousands of times higher pitched than an FM signal because of its powerful magnetic field. If you could spot these kinds of signatures coming from these jumbos, then you might be able to lock down their identity. However, no planets were giving off any sort of detectable radio emissions except 
for one. And that is even stranger than anything that the researchers expected. Why would you have only one pair of planets giving off powerful radio signals? But that is indeed what happened. Jumbo 24, which itself is a bit odd amongst all of these objects because it's the heaviest of the jumbos and it also has the tightest space between its components' planets. A decade's worth of data collated by the research team demonstrated that it had steady, strong radio waves that varied anywhere between 6 and 10 gigahertz. The radio waves were not circularly polarized, meaning that they lacked spinal spiral twisting electrical fields, which is what you tend to find with radio signals associated with powerful magnetic fields. Without this, the team can't even say definitively that the signals are coming from Jumbo 24, assuming that the planets have magnetic fields because they don't seem to coincide with the types of radio signals that one would expect to come from a planet of this size. So yeah. They found radio signals all right, but it just made the mystery that much more confusing. But what if Jumbo 24 isn't a planet, but rather some other type of astronomical object? Well, the signals generated from this particular object don't coincide with any other type of known astronomical object either. Signals from brown dwarfs, for example, are very different from the newly identified radio beams. Also, their brightness and frequency does not coincide with pulsars either. Pulsars being a very unlikely possibility in the Orion Nebula, but nevertheless, that's something they considered, and no, that's not the case. Now what if the signals are coming from someplace else, say from an object behind Jumbo 24? Well, the researchers crunched some numbers to determine what the likelihood of that was, and it came out to 1 in 10,000. But here's the thing. The researchers also, of course, believe that the radio signals aren't coming from aliens. However, in my opinion, the justifications that Dr. Rodriguez presents for why these objects are, don't have some sort of artificial origin are pretty flimsy. Quote, Life is not expected in Jupiter-like objects without a solid surface, and jumbos would be quite cool since no star is associated with them. If jumbos had moons, one could speculate that life could evolve in subsurface oceans like it is suspected in Europa, Ganymede, and Enceladus. However, the objects in Orion are young at just a few million years old, meaning there probably has not been enough time for life to appear on these moons if they exist. Now, of course, he doesn't talk about the possibility that perhaps a civilization from outside the Orion Nebula built these things, that a civilization that doesn't require a solid surface, perhaps they are building some sort of massive stellar engine. Stellar engineering is something that is theorized quite frequently when we're talking about extremely advanced alien civilizations. So why wouldn't one of these pairs perhaps be some sort of gigantic stellar engine designed to generate a considerable amount of energy? But for what purpose? Well, first of all, could the gravitational relationship between two planets be used to generate energy? Well, absolutely, yes. We use gravity to generate power on our planet and have been doing so for many centuries. On a small scale, if we're talking about water wheels, mills, agriculture and food production being facilitated by the relationship of water and gravity and hydroelectric dams, take that relationship to the next level, generating enormous amounts of power, enough to power entire cities. Could you in turn create some sort of planetary engine that could harness the gravitational relationship between two massive planets? And even if you could, what would you do with that energy? Well, here's one thing, generate extremely powerful radio beams. And why would you do that? Well, we've talked about that before on this channel. Very powerful radio waves can be used 
to push light sails and they can push them to tremendous velocities if you put enough energy behind it. A light sail utilizing solar energy or a laser or something like that are not as efficient as light sails being pushed by high energy radio waves. As a matter of fact, Dr. Avi Loeb calculated that a light sail being pushed by a high energy radio beam being generated by a solar power plant approximately twice the size of Earth could achieve speeds of up to 50% of the speed of light while hauling a payload of a million tons. We're talking about massive interstellar spacecraft being pushed by radio beams of this type and intensity. How much more powerful might these radio beams be if they were being created by the gravitational relationship of two massive planets? It's very difficult sometimes to think of technology at this type of level, but science fiction authors for decades have come up with ideas like this, and some of their concepts are quite compelling. And there's a reason why you need to generate this type of energy. It's simply because reaching the speed of light, or rather a substantial percentage of the speed of light, especially if you're an ancient and advanced interstellar civilization looking to propel very large payloads across the galaxy, well, that takes a lot of energy. But unfortunately, neither the researchers nor the media seem interested in pursuing these types of possibilities. Instead, just about all of them end their articles this way. Thus, while jumbos may be the astronomical discovery of the 2020s and are fascinating targets for scientists who want to understand the formation of stars and planets better, they may not be great targets for scientists investigating the possibility of life outside the solar system. Let's hope there's some SETI researcher out there, someone with a little more imagination and the resources to investigate these objects further who may feel a little bit differently. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you Andrew Titus and Peter Green for becoming our latest Patreon supporters. Thanks so much. It makes a big difference to what I can create on this channel and my ability to keep bringing content to you. And if you'd like to join these folks, all the details are in the description. And as always, stay angry about space.